They spray our skies Interact with, with the magnetic toxic chemicals. Space travel is Mars is a Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to Debunk the Funk. How's your vision? Do you need to wear glasses or some other type of corrective lens? Do you ever get headaches? Have you or someone you know recently gained weight or lost weight? Do you know anyone experiencing hair loss, arthritis? Have you forgotten something recently? Can you even remember if you have forgotten something recently? These ailments, along with some very serious ones, including cancer, heart attack, strokes, some would have you believe that these are all from the same cause. Chemicals that all developed nations have decided to expose their populations to, and that they're being deployed by all modern jet engines in use today. They like to call these chemtrails. As I explored the topic of chemtrails, I had a very similar experience as to when I was first looking into flat earth ideas. I found that there isn't just one idea of chemtrails out there, but instead a large number of similar ideas that would sometimes very much be in conflict with each other when it came to the details. So it's a bit of a challenge for me to try to explain to the viewer what exactly is a chemtrail? What chemicals are supposedly in them? What exact specific health problems are these supposed to cause? And also, the really big question, why would all these governments that usually can't agree on anything all agree to go in on this conspiracy? It's almost like trying to define for you the chemistry behind why are dragons able to breathe fire? or the physics behind why don't vampires cast a reflection in mirrors. But what I can try to do is briefly explain to you the general idea of chemtrails. And keep in mind then, because there's debate over these little details, I guarantee you no matter what I say, there would be some chemtrail enthusiasts out there that will disagree with me and say that I got it wrong. But that's because there's very few things that all of them unanimously agree with. Still, here's my best attempt to gather up a few things that most of them seem to all agree with. Number one, cloudy streams that we see in the sky, produced by jet engines, contain unnatural chemicals. Number two, these chemicals are being sprayed everywhere developed societies exist. Pretty much any nation that uses jet engines or allows them to be flown overhead are spraying these chemicals. Number three, these chemicals do something bad to us. I can't really be more specific than bad, because this is easily the place where there's the most disagreement. Some chemtrail enthusiasts will just claim it's those health problems I mentioned before. Some debate over what health problems are a result of this and which ones aren't. Some want to say it's about mind control and that these chemicals somehow make us more docile. And there's another fraction of the people who would say that it has something to do with birth control. The list is endless, and dare I say, pretty much anything under the sky. Number four, the governments of all developed nations are in on it and have agreed to secretly expose their populace to these harmful chemicals. Wow. There's a lot there. More than just one episode should explore. So we're going to flesh out chemtrails over the next couple of episodes. For this episode, though, as kind of an introduction to the idea, I thought we'd explore an area where some chemtrail enthusiasts, they attempt to use it as evidence that this chemtrail phenomenon is happening. And it's all about the snow. Something that the idea of chemtrails hinges upon is that if developed nations are spraying these chemicals everywhere, then we should be able to find these chemicals everywhere. Well, what exactly are the chemicals that we should be looking for? What exactly is in these chemtrails? Here's another area where the chemtrail enthusiasts seem to have some disagreement, or in some cases are actually pretty vague. I can't help but point out here that if anyone's being intentionally vague about what chemicals to look for, well, that kind of helps prevent them from ever being disproven. Kind of tough to set up some sort of test to see if the chemicals are out there or not if we're never actually told what chemicals we're supposed to be looking for. Some sources I was able to find at least alluded to the idea that it's barium compounds, or in other cases, aluminum compounds. But still, they never get specific as to what barium or aluminum compounds we're talking about. Still, what some chemtrail enthusiasts claim is that these chemicals, whatever they are, they're in our snow. And here's the fun part, that these chemicals either can burn or cause the snow to burn. 
Videos exist all over YouTube of various people picking up some freshly fallen snow, packing it up, and then exposing it to a flame. Whether that be a propane torch, a butane lighter, or in some cases a candle flame. When they do, two things happen that the makers of these videos claim is some very strange behavior for snow. Well, these two things, we're going to put to the test today. Claim number one. When exposed to a flame, snow that has been affected by chemtrails will burn or char. Please understand, when I say burn, nobody's claiming that the snow catches on fire and there's flames coming off of it. But instead that the snow starts to char and singe with like a black sooty look to it. But this right here is going to turn black. I mean, I am putting this fire directly to the snow. And it's burning. Look. I thought this was supposed to be real snow. And then it's, like it's black. Looks like plastic. Claim number two. When exposed to a flame, snow that has been affected by chemtrails will not melt. Most of these videos don't really claim what is happening to the snow, but they do usually make the remark that the snow should be melting and that we should see visible evidence of this by uh, droplets or puddles of water. It's not melting. Wow. Look at that. It's not dripping. Snow doesn't like that. Whoa, what kind of snow is this? It's not melting, people. Look at this. Where are the drippings? I've never seen anything like this. No water, no condensation, anything. This is not, this is not snow. This is crazy. Where is the water? This is not snow. This is crazy. What are they spraying in our air? Well, just so happens we're in Michigan and some snow fell last night. So let's put these two claims to the test and in fact let's see if we can get some of the same results that some of these chemtrail enthusiasts are also getting. Let's go. Alright, so here's Michigan in December and it just snowed. Let's go see if we can reproduce the results from some of those videos. I'm gonna go grab some snow. All right, now let's try to, uh, to burn it, right? What do you think? Is that a successful test? Did we burn the snow? Take a look. There's definitely a sooty deposit. But is this evidence that there's these dangerous chemicals everywhere? Or something else happening? Well, you see, every good experiment needs a control. And the videos I was seeing, all they did was try this with snow. What if we try some other things? Here's a one dollar Eisenhower coin. Let's give it a shot. Same kind of Sooty residue. Did I just burn this coin? Maybe this is evidence that those chemicals are everywhere. Or maybe something else is happening. I'm getting a little cold. Let's go back inside and do a few more control tests. 
All right, so we just did the test outdoors and you saw the results, but also let's do the test also in here where there's a little bit better lighting and you can maybe see the details a bit more. So here's another snowball and let's go ahead and expose it to the butane flame. Charring is pretty evident, but also take note of what else chemtrail enthusiasts claim is bizarre behavior. Shouldn't the snow be melting? In other words, shouldn't we see water dripping off of the snow? We expect that if we're exposing snow, frozen water, to a flame, to a heat source, we would expect that the snow should melt. And certainly with the divot that that flame was making, we were seeing less snow there. So what was happening to that snow? Was it burning up? No. It's melting. You see, there's a flaw in the idea here. Yes, we should expect that the snow should melt, but what somebody shouldn't expect to see is the snow melting right there and dripping off of the snowball. Let me explain what I mean. You see, snow is porous, meaning it has a bunch of little tiny pockets within the snow structure. I know we like to think of snow as just being solid water, ice crystals. But actually, when those ice crystals are packed closely together, there still is a whole bunch of empty spaces in between them. When I say empty, what I really mean is filled with air. That's different than pure ice. Ice is very close packed. Whereas snow and snowballs, these things still have plenty of room for more water to be added. It's like a ice crystal sponge. In addition to that, water is a polar molecule. Roughly speaking, what that means is that water molecules, they're all attracted to each other. So as the snow is exposed to a heat source, yes, that snow is melting. But as soon as it melts and it becomes liquid water, it is also attracted to the solid ice that it's still in contact with, and it gets absorbed into the snowball. Let me demonstrate for you what I mean. Here's another snowball, and you can see what happens here if I take a little pipette and apply some water to it. Now, I just added plenty of water to this snow. Do we see it dripping out of the snowball? No, the snow is much more absorbent than that. In fact, there's plenty of room for more water to be added to this snowball. Take a look of where the level of water is at here in this squirt bottle. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding water to the snowball. And please notice the bottom of the snowball. Don't see any water dripping down right now, do you? Now I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this until we do start to see some amount of water drip out of the snowball. And there we go. There it is. So I quickly stop and we can see now what the level of the water is in the squirt bottle. Look at that. I was able to add plenty of water to that snowball before we ever saw any drops start to drip from it. Bottom line, snow is absorbent. This is not strange or unusual or weird behavior of snow. This is just what it does. It's just quite possible that some of the people making these videos just never knew this about snow and discovered it while they were searching for chemtrail evidence. All right, next, what's up with that charring? Is that the snow burning? Or is that impurities, chemicals that have been dumped on us from chemtrails that are now in the snow? No. That black color is carbon. It's just normal carbon soot. But where's it coming from? Well, it's coming from whatever fuel source you're using to make the flame in the first place. Whether it be a propane torch, a butane lighter, or candle wax, what these fuel sources have in common is that they are primarily carbon compounds. In a lot of cases, pure hydrocarbons. You might remember from chemistry class. Your chemistry teacher maybe showed you an equation like this. Here's the equation that shows the combustion of butane. Now, if you were paying attention that day, your chemistry teacher probably told you that in these combustion reactions, when you burn a hydrocarbon, you're always making carbon dioxide and water. And maybe they did use that word always. Well, that's not exactly true. There needs to be a little asterisk next to that always. That's always true if there's plenty of oxygen available. But when something's burning and it starts to run low on oxygen, the first thing that happens is that instead of producing carbon dioxide and water, the reaction will produce carbon monoxide and water. Now if the oxygen supply or access to it starts to run even lower than that, carbon monoxide is also no longer produced, but instead just elemental carbon. There's just not enough oxygen to make the water and make carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. So just carbon ends up getting made. That carbon that's produced that's the black soot that we're seeing here. Want some evidence of this? Hey, here's the glass I was using to get the water from. Check that out. 
Am I burning the glass? Check this one out. Here's a ceramic bowl. Same results. In all these cases, including with the snow, when we are putting an object above the flame, we are very much restricting how much oxygen that flame is going to get. If we bring it close enough, we start to produce elemental carbon. And that elemental carbon just ends up depositing on whatever surface is available. Even snow. Sorry, but I'm calling it. Two for one special. These two claims are debunked. Now again, does that mean I just disproved the chemtrail idea? No. But I am going to say that there's no chemicals you need worry about in your snow. And so if you're trying to use that as somehow evidence that chemtrails exist and the governments are polluting us intentionally, I'm sorry, but the evidence just does not back up your claim. But stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel and see what's coming up. In the next couple of episodes, we're going to take an even closer look at the chemtrail idea and flesh out a little bit more of those details. Hey, thanks for checking this video out. I'm Rich Lund, and I'm here to remind you, the world needs critical thinkers. Make sure you're one of them. Catch you next time.